how does the research work? We take the mussels from an aquaculture source in Whidbey Island. We use Pen Cove shellfish mussels. We transplant them in cages to locations all over the Puget Sound for three months. Over okay, we're having some audio issues with that story. We will come back with that later in this newscast. Okay, we're going to run, run it right Let's now. Let's give it a shot. How does the research work? We take the mussels from an aquaculture source in Whidbey Island. We use Pen Cove shellfish mussels. We transplant them in cages to locations all over the Puget Sound for three months over the winter and let the mussels absorb the contaminants as they naturally do. After three months, we bring them back to the laboratory. We composite mussels from each of the sites together, um, grind them up, and then analyze their tissues at a laboratory for chemical contaminants. And what did you find? Well, we found a, a high incidence of organic contaminants related to urbanization in Puget Sound. So most of the organic contaminants that we're finding, these are like the PCBs and the PAHs that come from oil spills and creosote, are in areas with a lot of people, like the Elliott Bay area, Bramerton, Tacoma, where you see high urbanization. And then you also find drugs, drugs antibiotics. Right, and those are the pharmaceuticals and the personal care products. We found antibiotics, we found um, antidepressants, we found chemotherapy drugs, heart medications, and then also oxycodone in the muscles from these mostly urbanized areas. You've gotten a lot of attention because of the oxycodone right. that was found in it, but you're saying it was actually minimal compared to the other stuff that you found. That's right, that's right. We found oxycodone in only three of the 18 sets of mussels that we analyzed, and they were only present in Elliott Bay and then at two sites in Bremerton. And the concentrations of oxycodone in the mussels were about 100 to 500 times less than you would get in like a normal therapeutic dose for humans. So you'd have to eat 100 50 pounds of mussels from that contaminated area to even get like a minimal dose. So it may not be a concern for humans, but right. it is a concern for wildlife, you're saying. That's right. So we, because we're finding them in mussels, that means that these chemicals are present in the water, and that means that they're likely affecting the fish and other invertebrates that are in the water. So for instance, the juvenile Chinook salmon that are coming down the Duwamish River and into Elliott Bay for rearing are likely being exposed to these same chemicals.